Good morning, guys. It's Anthony, and it is Garage News Time. Thank you guys for tuning in. And if this is your first time checking us out, make sure to hit subscribe down below. We appreciate comments, shares, all of that stuff. And if you're not familiar with it, every Monday we drop a new Garage News where we dive into everything automotive, motorcycle related, whether it's TV stuff or uh, it could be a vendor, it could be a new truck coming out, car, and so much more. But today I wanted to talk about something as I have recently added an intake to the Ram Rebel. That video will be coming out soon, um, if not already by the time you're watching this video. And it started to get me think while I was doing the install that, you know, when we get a new car or a new truck, almost every gearhead or garage life kind of guy always adds stuff. And I wanted to talk about a couple of things that I've added and then something that I saw on the internet that I thought was interesting um, as I was thinking about adding it. So almost on every car or truck that I've owned for any period of time, I've always added a cold air intake of some caliber or some kind. 90% of the time it has been K&N. Now recently I got the AFE Power Stage 2 uh, Mo uh, momentum GT intake. Now that's a new thing to me, but I've always done the KN. Now I've done various types of exhausts from Borla to Gibson to uh, Magnaflow to Flowmaster and so forth and so on. Um, and generally I do those within the first short while of having the car simply because I want it to sound better. I want a little bit of performance. Now, obviously, your horsepower to dollar ratio for those items is not that great. And there's also these debates going on. The Camaro is a perfect example of that, where it's, if you do an intake, people are saying it doesn't do anything unless you get the tune, vice versa. The interesting thing that I find with that is you have companies like K&N and Rotofab and all these other companies that are saying, hey, we put it on the dyno and these are real results. Um, so that's interesting in the performance world. Now, if you have a truck, a big thing that I've gotten and I have gotten damn near on every truck is I always get a topper to protect the back, especially if I'm hauling stuff around, which I normally do. That's why I got a truck. Um, I also get side steps because generally I don't have a huge issue unless I lift the truck on getting in and out of it. But passengers, occupants, uh, loading my kids up in and out can be difficult. So again, I've had numerous versions of all of those toppers from the hard shell to the soft shell to the roll up to the hard the hard fold up um so forth and so on and all of those things serve some type of purpose or some reasoning behind it now i do want to know what are your top three things that you've done to your vehicles because i'd like to do future uh videos about this simply because i find it super interesting on which direction people go now obviously on the camaro i've done a lot of exterior modifications a couple of interior modifications and much more the motorcycles i have i've done exhaust intake and so much more in those worlds as well now the point of this more or less was i was doing the install on it i've been on a lot of facebook groups for the ram for the camaro and there's such a twist and turn on what parts to get what parts not to get this does this this doesn't do that um and i'm really genuinely interested in some of the parts that you guys are putting on your rides and the reason why now wheels and tires on any car most of the time is pretty self-explanatory on the Camaro, whether you wanna to go to a drag pack, smaller smaller wheel, bigger tire, uh, or if you wanna to go to a bigger wheel or stay at the 20s and you want that difference, that, that cool look of whatever your version of cool is. It goes the same for trucks, right? Um, with the exception of drag, most of the time, either guys are going the off-road style, they'll either drop in size, go up in size, put an off-road tire, on-road tire, uh, or highway tire, so forth and so on. So again, it's super interesting and there's so many companies and we're gonna be diving into some of those companies here on Garage News on all of those crazy options. Now, I'm gonna end this uh, with an interesting thing I was following on the Ram Rebel uh, group on Facebook. Guys, we're doing the interior accent lighting, which uh, I have not done interior accent lighting. I've had vehicles with them pre-installed and I was thinking about doing it. So I started reading through the comments and some of the comments that guys were putting on there was uh, there was a guy in Canada saying that, hey, you can't run blue. You're not supposed to run blue or red in the interior because of the police. 
And then there's guys all over the United States saying that, yeah, you can in my area. Yeah, you can't. You're not allowed to run blue or red on the exterior. 